Welcome to the Dials and Levers Method seminar slash webinar, Creating Habits, Routines, Rituals, and Daily Structure to Achieve Your Body Composition Goals. Let's get into this. I'm excited to present this to you today. My name is Matt Pack. I'm the owner and founder of Primal Fit Miami. I started Primal Fit back in 2010, and I've been in the fitness industry helping people change their bodies and improve their health for almost, well, no, over 25 years now. So I'm excited to present to you today. Let's get started. Uh, the whole goal of this webinar is to help simplify fat loss. It's to explain to people that you don't need to be on a unrealistic diet, um, an unsustainable diet in order to lose weight and reach your uh, body composition goals. I'm hoping at the end of this, you are going to feel a lot more confident and empowered on taking your results to the next level. Let's start by explaining the energy continuum. Um, I created this to show people um, where they currently are eating from and where I will help people to suggest where they need to be. Um, so if you look at the left side of this energy continuum, you're going to find the high carb, low fat uh, side, which is basically the Atkins, carnivore, keto, South Beach, paleo type of diets or lifestyles. On the opposite end of this spectrum, you're going to find the low fat, high carb, plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, fruitarian side. So you can be successful with weight loss on both of these sides. Um, the problem is when you start to migrate to the middle of this spectrum or continuum, and this is where you're going to find high fat, high carb at the same time. This is the standard American diet. This is heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and of course, the obesity epidemic. This is where the majority of our society is currently uh, lying. And we need to try to nudge them to the left of this uh, scale or to the right of the scale. Uh, this is my 10%. You know, I want you to understand that you can uh, hang out in the middle, but you just can't hang out there very long. And that's why I always advocated for like a 90% compliancy from either the left or the right side of the scale with a 10% uh, uh, where you can live and be healthy and still reach your fitness and aesthetic uh, goals in the middle, uh, having, you know, the things that you want in moderation that 10% of the time. So what I want you to do right now is to kind of figure out where you lie on this particular spectrum. Is it on the left side? Is it on the right side? Is it somewhere in between? Is it in the middle? Because the, the key with sustainable fat loss is figuring out um, how we can best use what you're already doing um, to reach your goals versus totally upending uh, and uh, just just tearing up everything you're doing right now, which is unsustainable, you know? So I like to figure out exactly what people enjoy eating. Where do you lie? Where does it lie on the spectrum? And how can we work in the things that you enjoy eating into a diet that will help you reach your health and aesthetic goals? So for instance, I, I let's talk about me for a second. I per personally have been, the majority of my career on the high fat, low carb side. I've dibble dabbled in the majority or, or, or variations of these particular diets on the left side of the spectrum, Atkins, Carnivore, Keto, South Beach, and Paleo. I call it, you know, the eating real food, jerf diet, right? Just eat real food. Um, that would be fall into the same category as uh, on the high fat, low carb side. Um, and I've done that for the majority of my career and it's a very healthy way to eat and it is uh, a good way to reach your aesthetic goals as well, but it may not be sustainable for everyone. And I say this because 
I, over the last two years, have transitioned sides. I now am on the right side of the spectrum. I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. I don't advocate for that type of lifestyle. But if you enjoy that and it's sustainable for you, um, then more power to you. I am definitely more high carbohydrate, low fat at this particular time of my life. And I enjoy being here. So you can uh, go from left side to right side. You don't have to stay on one side or the other uh, for any particular time. Uh, the goal here is to choose foods that you enjoy and implement them into your diet into some sort of a calorie deficit to allow you to reach the goals you're looking for. Because if your goal is to get leaner and to decrease uh, your chances of disease, eating in the middle is not going to get you there, right? So we need to be realistic here. So choosing right side, left side, or uh, interchangeably moving uh, by meal or uh, by the day or the week uh, or the month is totally fine to be uh, quite honest with you as long as you're staying in with the, within your calorie, your daily calorie needs. I chose to kind of migrate uh, on the scale to the lower fat, high carb side because I enjoy carbohydrates. I like carbohydrates and I said, you know what, let's see how my body changes uh, in, enjoying a more higher carbohydrate, lower fat lifestyle. And I've seen some significant changes in my body composition, better changes in my body composition than when I was on the opposite side of the spectrum, the high fat, low carb. Uh, I was carnivore for a year and a half. I was paleo or a version of paleo for the majority of my career. Uh, I got good results on the left side. I felt great on the left side. My blood work looked good on the left side. Um, but now that I've incorporated carbohydrates and, uh, and using uh, my primary source of energy as being that uh, high carbohydrate, I feel like I look the best I've ever have at a higher weight. So that's why I chose to, to experiment over here. And I'd like to experiment on both sides. I've been on the left side and now I'm on the right side. Um, if I can have carbohydrates and still look and feel great and my blood work looks fantastic, then why not? Uh, I think so many people have a carbohydrate phobia um, and I'm here to tell you that you can eat a lot of carbohydrates as long as you're keeping your fat in a lower dosage, you can uh, re not only reach your body composition goals, but you can also be extremely healthy as well. So that's where I am at. Uh, I want to know what your primary source of energy you would like to utilize. Is it going to be a higher fat carbohydrate or excuse me, a higher fat energy source, or is it going to be a higher carbohydrate energy source? It's going to be very difficult to use to use both of them at the same time because that's when you're in that standard American diet. That's where you're in the middle, high carb, high fat at the same time. That is what we call a calorie surplus. So we don't want to stay there very long. That's why I was uh, uh, saying earlier, this is a place you would stay, say, two to three meals a week, like 10% of your diet, you would be in a high carb, high fat situation at the same time. You don't want to be there very long. You want to be 80 to 90% of the time on one or other of the side of the spectrum, either high fat, low carb, or a low fat, high carb. So uh, choose your energy source and choose it wisely. If you enjoy carbohydrates, I highly, I highly uh, suggest that you should move to the right side of the scale because it's gonna be more sustainable to reach your fat loss goals. Um, utilizing foods that you enjoy. Uh, but if you uh, enjoy higher fat, higher, lower carbohydrate lifestyle, and it's where you can, and it's somewhere you can be uh, sustainably for long periods of time, then I say you stay on the left side. So it's really uh, depends on the individual, on what they enjoy. That's why I always ask, do you like carbohydrates? Are you okay without them? Because if you are uh, really uh, privy to eating more carbohydrates and I say let's you stay eating carbohydrates and you just lower the fat intake and that's where this energy continuum this scale came about is to 
figure out where you're currently at and figure out where you would like to be to reach your fat loss and health goals. Let's move on to the nutrition and levers section. So this section is all about figuring out or explaining to you what the levers are, right? And this is our first and most important lever, which is the nutrition lever. When I get in a consultation with people, I put my Sherlock Holmes hat on and I dive in to try to figure out what the day, week, month looks like. What is this person eating? What, uh, what, what, where are they currently at? And I try to figure out where we can clean things up. What lever do I need to pull? Because there's numerous levers uh, that we can pull. Uh, but the nutrition lever in general is going to have a certain amount of dials underneath it. Protein dial, the fat dial, the carb dial, the vegetable dial, snacking and beverage dials, and the meal frequency dial. So what I do is I go in and I figure out how much protein this person's eating. I want to know how much fat this person's eating, the carbohydrate amount this person's eating, the vegetable content, how many, how many snacks is this person currently eating, how many beverages is this person, person currently eating, and I want to know how many meals per day this person's eating. So what I'm able to do is to go in and, and instead of turning this person's life upside down into an unsustainable uh, type of situation, I'm going to simply pull a certain lever and then I'm going to start dialing up or dialing up. And it's that simple. Instead of taking someone's uh, nutrition and eliminating it completely, I'm able to see where they're currently at. And for instance, this person, like most people, are not eating enough protein. I simply will dial the protein up. If this person's fat is too high or too low, I can simply dial it up or dial it down. Same thing with carbohydrates. I'm going to figure out, is this a primary energy source? Do they want to utilize carbohydrates as their primary energy source? Is it too low? If so, I'm going to dial it up. If this person wants to use fat as their primary energy source, I'm going to dial the carbohydrates down. Same thing with vegetable content. Most people have a problem with not eating enough fiber. They're not satiated. They are eating too many snacks they are taking in too many calories because they can't get they're not never full they're never satiated so by doing increasing the protein we help them with, sati with satiety we also will then increase vegetable and fiber content to help them with satiety and just by dialing up protein and dialing up vegetables we can in, uh, in, do an incredible thing and that's lower total calories because they're going to eat less they're going to snack less so just increasing protein and vegetables can knock out a couple different birds with one stone. Snacking as well, when I find out somebody's taking in, they're eating, say, 10 snacks per week, I'm going to want to dial the snacking down. Do I need to take it to zero? Not necessarily, but I may be able to take them from 10 to 5. Now, will I get better results with this person if I can lower their snacking? Uh, their snacking. Absolutely. I can take them from 10 to 5. It's the same thing I can do with beverages. If I find out this person is drinking 10 beers per week, instead of taking and asking this person to do something unrealistic like stop drinking completely, which I would like them to say, but not always that is not going always going to happen, I'll take them from 10 beers to 5, right? Or 10 to 4. But whatever they're comfortable with, but they can still have alcohol, but they're going to take it uh, down half if I can get them from 10 to 5 and I get, take their snacking from 10 to 5, we're going to see great results without totally taking everything they love out of their diet. Same thing with meal frequency. I'm also going to figure out how many meals we need to have to fit this person's lifestyle. Um, and once I figure out their calorie needs for the day, we'll figure out how many meals they need to, to get the particular calories for their day. So whether it's three or four or five, it's whatever is best to fit their needs, their goals, and their particular lifestyle. So always I can dial up meal frequency or I can deal, dial down meal frequency 
to even get them uh, in a, to get them in a calorie deficit. So there's numerous dials in the nutrition underneath the nutrition lever, but almost always, if the goal is to lose body fat or change physique, we're going to need to pull the nutrition lever and start dialing up or dialing down on particular dials. Next up, the fitness lever. This is another one that we always are going to have to pull. Um, we have daily movement underneath that fitness lever as well as strength training, cardio, restoration. So, And the dials underneath are going to be the daily step dial, the strength training dial, the daily cardio dial, and the restoration dials and it will include the sleep, stress management, stretching, and mobility. So when I look at someone's totality of their day and their week and their month of what they're doing, I want to know how many steps they're getting in their day. I want to know how many times a week they're strength training. I want to know how much cardio they're doing on a weekly basis. I want to know how much sleep they're getting. I want to know what their stress management's like. I want to know how much, how often they are getting stretching and mobility into their week, right? So this is how I'm able to dial up or dial down certain uh, dials underneath these levers. You may not need to pull all the levers all at one time. It depends on the person, but more than likely, I'm always going to pull the nutrition lever and then I'm going to come over and absolutely pull the daily movement lever. I'm going to figure out how many steps this person is averaging on a daily basis. I will have them track it for a week and then I will look at it and find out this person may be, uh, uh, they may be tracking at say 5,000 steps per day. Now the average American is averaging around 2,500 steps per day, fairly low. So if this person is, say this person is averaging 2,500 steps per day, I'm going to dial this lever up and I'm going to try to get them to 5,000 with the ultimate goal to be closer to eight or 10,000. But I'm not going to take them to 10,000 right away. I'm going to gradually increase that dial and I want to take him from 2,500 to 5,000, or it could be 4,000. But depending on the person and where they're currently at, I'm going to dial up daily steps because it's that important in conjunction with nutrition. And then I'm going to look at strength training. And this person is overweight. If they're uh, not happy with their body composition, I am absolutely going to suggest two to three days a week of strength training. So if this person is no, not strength training at all, I'm going to dial it up to two days per week. If they're already doing two days per week, I may dial it up to three days per week. Same thing with cardio. And once again, I may not do all these at one time. It's depending on the person, depending on the goal, depending on the personality of the person that's in front of me. But if someone's doing zero cardio, I may ask them to dial it up to one day per week or even two days per week. For it, but if this person is already doing a ton of cardio and they're still overweight and they're not happy where their body is, I may dial down the cardio and dial up the daily movement and emphasize strength training and nutrition and daily movement, right? So the cardio obviously isn't working. This is, this is an aha moment for some people that are uh, maybe doing a lot of cardio. Maybe it's a runner, an overweight runner. So this is when I come in and I, and I have to look at everything they're doing and find out what's working and what's not working. And then we start dialing up or dialing down, pulling the necessary levers to reach this person's goals. So it depends on the person and the goal. If somebody is stay strength training five days a week and they're getting a lot of cardio, but they have 2,000 steps per day and their diet is shitty, then I'm obviously going to probably dial back on the strength training. It's not working. I'm going to dial back on the cardio. It's not working. I'm going to dial up on the daily movement. And I'm going to pull the nutrition lever and see what I can find on, uh, and, and to increase or decrease the dials under the nutrition lever. Same thing with restoration. If somebody is, has a knee injury or a shoulder injury or a lower back injury and they are – uh, not sleeping well and they're not stretching and, and doing mobility and they're not uh, dealing with stress, then obviously I'm going to pull that lever and we'll dial some things up or down uh, there as well. So hopefully you're trying, you're, you're seeing 
what I'm trying to do here with my Sherlock Holmes hat on. I want to see where everyone is currently at and I'm going to dive into their lifestyle and I'm going to pull necessary levers and, 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 and turn specific dials to help this person reach their particular goal. And this is what I want you to be honest with yourself at home on how to do it yourself because you don't have to pull every lever and you don't have to, to turn every dial. It's dependent on where you're currently at. So hopefully you're understanding the point of this, uh, this activity. Okay, next up, let's look at me as an example. Let's dive deeper into a, an example of uh, how you can handle this and where I am currently at. Let's talk about currently where I am at. It's currently strength training two to three days per week. My steps are currently at 9,200 per day. I'm not doing any active cardio. There's no dedicated cardio in my week. Uh, I don't stretch enough, but I don't have any injuries right now. I'm sleeping eight hours per night. My meal frequency, four meals per day. I know exactly what I'm doing. I don't currently drink any alcohol. I eat out two days per week. I am currently 225 pounds and I'm 11% uh, body fat. So the goal, what do I want over the next, say, 16 weeks. I want two to three days. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, excuse me. I'm going to, my goal, if you look at the bottom, my goal is say 215 pounds. And matter of fact, this was not over 16 weeks. This is over the next 30 days. I like to do 30 day goals first. So over the next 30 days, the goal is 215 pounds. So I want to lose 10 pounds over the next 30 days. And I want to get from 11% body fat to 8% body fat. So to do that, I'm going to set my I'm going to dial up my steps to 15,000. I'm going to dial up my cardio to two days per week. Uh, I'm going to keep my meal frequency at four meals per day. I'm going to go from two days of eating out. I'm dialing down on the, the eating out dial uh, from two to one. Uh, and uh, that's it. Let's go to what that looks like. All right. So nutrition wise, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to make some changes in the nutrition world, okay? Nutrition realm. I am currently eating 45 grams of oatmeal, 45 grams of cream of rice, 200 grams of egg whites, 40 grams of protein, 20 grams of pecans, 15 grams of coconut, 10 grams of cacao nibs, 100 grams of blueberries. And I'm going to show you how I'm not going to eliminate this meal. I'm not going to change it, but I'm going to dial some stuff down. And we'll talk more about that in a second. My meal number two, and this is a 90, these are 90% meals that I'm eating right now, okay? As you can see here, fish, white rice, coconut shrimp, and green beans. Next up, my, my uh, dinner, this is another meat, low-fat meat, high-fat meat. This looks like beef and chicken, plantains, and green beans again. Last but not least, my fourth and final meal of the day, this is cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, protein powder, granola, rice checks, and 100 grams of blueberries. This is an amazing meal, one of my favorite meals of the day. But I'm going to need to dial some stuff down in here. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what I'm going to do, okay? 10% meals. These are the meals that I eat and whenever I want. I work these meals into my diet 10% of the time. I call these planned hedonic deviations. I, I will not take these out. I will work these types of calories into my world so I can eat whatever I want and still reach the goals I'm looking for. So there's hamburgers and french fries. There's bagels. There's pizza. There's chicken wings. There's guava and cheese pastelitos. There's protein waffles and egg whites. There is Cuban sandwiches on here. I eat whatever I want, but I'm very strategic on when and how much I have them. Let's move forward. What am I going to do? What am I going to do for the future fat loss to occur? So if you look on the left side, this is, this is what I was eating before. Meal number one, oatmeal, cream of rice, 45 grams of oatmeal, 45 grams of cream of rice, 200 grams of egg whites, 40 grams of protein powder, 20 grams of pecans, 15 coconut. Look to the right. What, here's what I'm going to do. I'm dialing my oatmeal down from 45 to 30. I'm dialing my cream of rice from 45 to 30. I'm dialing my egg whites from 
200 grams to 150. Uh, I'm keeping my 40 grams of protein powder, but I'm dialing my, my pecans down from 20 to 10. My coconuts going from 15 to 7. My cacao nibs are going from 10 to 5. And my blueberries are going from 100 to 75. So as you can see there, some significant changes to take my calories down um, considerably. And I did that mostly with dialing down on my fat intake. Okay, let's look at meal two and meal three. I'm keeping it the same. I, those are the, my, my meal two and meal three, my lunch and dinner are not a problem for me. My dials that need to be uh, altered are going to be at meal one and meal four. I have no idea what they're going to be in your diet. I haven't seen it yet, but we're going to talk about some, another person's example in a second so you can see where my head is. But look at meal number four. I'm going from 200 grams of cottage cheese to 150 grams. I'm going to from, uh, I am also going from 200 grams of Greek yogurt to 150 grams of Greek yogurt. I'm also, I'm going to keep the protein powder the same and I'm dialing down once again on the fat, 20 grams of granola to 10 grams of granola, 20 grams of rice checks to 10 grams of rice checks. And I'm going to keep the blueberries the same, right? So just me changing, all right? Uh, I'm increasing my strength training. I'm increasing my daily steps. I'm increasing my cardio. I'm going to decrease my fat at meal one. I'm going to decrease my fat at meal four. You guys see where I'm going with this? I'm not going on a crazy diet. I'm not going on some unrealistic crazy diet. I'm simply dialing some things up and dialing some things down. I want you to Look at what you're currently doing. Put your own Sherlock Holmes hat on. Write down everything. What does your life look like? What does the day-to-day -day look like? What's the structure of your day? What do those meals look like? Be very specific. Be very specific. And then go into that Sherlock Holmes mode where you're not taking out, necessarily taking things out completely. If you enjoy those foods, it's what you're eating on a regular basis. If you're enjoying these foods then I, I suggest you try to keep them in, but you just decrease the amount of what you're currently doing because what you're doing is not working, right? We have to be honest. What you're doing right now is not working. Now, you might need to look at the energy spectrum and say, hey, I'm too much in the middle, right? If 50% of your meals are in the 10% planned hedonic deviation, 10%, they're not 10%, they're near 50%, then we're, we're going to need to scale over or scale out to either the right side or the left side of that spectrum. What are you going to do? What's the primary source of energy you want? Is it going to be higher fat or is it going to be higher carbohydrates? That may need to be figured out as well, right? Because if you're in the, in the middle playing around, we need to make some serious decisions because you're going to, you're going to, you're putting yourself up for some serious health problems if you're hanging out in the middle too much. So figure out what do you want? Higher carb or higher fat? What side of the spectrum do you want to be on? And then we look at quality of food and, and how much of that food and what do we need to dial up and dial down, right? Then we look at strength training and cardio and nutrition. Obviously, what levers are we going to pull, right? We need to go with the basics first, but we got to put the Sherlock's home fat hat on first to decide where we're going to go. Let's look at another – let's look at what, what else we got here, daily movement. As you can see here, I went from – 9,200 steps per day to 15,000. I'm bumping up my daily movement big time, as you guys can see right there, right? So I pulled the nutrition lever and I lowered some stuff. I'm pulling the daily, daily movement lever and I'm going to go from 9,200 steps a day to 15,000 steps per day. What's next? Cardio lever, here it is. I'm going from no planned cardio to two 40-minute sessions per week. Next up. Let's see another example. Example number two, the average female client that I deal with. This person is currently doing one to two sessions per week. Very inconsistent. Current steps, 2,300 per day. No cardio, no stretching and mobility. They're getting some good sleep. Meal frequency, two meals per day. But they're snacking three times per day. Alcohol consumption, seven glasses of wine. Per week, current weight, 150 pounds at 35% body fat. Pretty typical. 
All right, let's look at what we want to achieve. What are we gonna What are we gonna do here? Three days per week of strength training. I'm gonna go from from 2,300 steps per day to 8,000. Cardio is going from zero to two. We're gonna add a little stretching and mobility for this person. They're gonna stay at eight hours per night. Sleep. Meal frequencies: three meals per day with no snacking. We're getting rid of those empty calories and the snacking. Alcohol, we're going to go from seven glasses a week to three glasses per week. I'm not going from seven to zero. They can work with me. They can do this, seven to three. Okay, give them a little bit of what they want so they stay with me. If they get, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do the program if I take it away from them. Uh, they're they went from seven eating out seven times per week, and we're gonna take them to three times per week. The goal is 130 pounds at 22% body fat. Now, this is going to take longer than 30 days, but this is a nice long-term, long-term goal right here. But you think they're going to see results? You think they're going to see results with this program? Absolutely. And they're going to do it even with having their cake and eating it too. Let's look at this. Average male. Let's see what this looks like. This particular person. This particular person is going from one to two unstructured sessions per week there to three structured sessions per week. 5,000 steps per day to 10,000 steps per day. They're running 15 miles per week. It ain't working. So let's dial it down a little bit. We're going to dial their, run, their cardio down to 10 miles per week. They love running. I can't take it from them. They just need to realize it's not working. We need to pull some other levers to get them the goals they're looking for. No stretching. They need to stretch. They're running a lot, and we're adding some structured strength training in the mix. So we're going to give them some strength, stretching, and mobility two to three days a week. The sleep, yeah, they're at five to seven. We're going to bring them to eight. Meal frequency, three meals per day. We're going to go four. These guys, are, this person, this male is running a lot. His activity is high. He's exerting a lot of energy. He needs more calories. He's drinking 10 beers per week. We're going to take it from 10 to 5. He's eating out six times per week. We're going to go to three times per week. He's at 190. We're going to take this guy to 175. This is going to take 8 to 12 weeks. 28% body fat to 20% body fat. You can average about 1 to 3% per month body fat loss. That's an average of 2%. So that's about four months, right? Four months, 16 weeks, we can get this guy to 20% body fat. And uh, so do you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm simply seeing where they're currently at. And then I'm pulling the necessary levers and Playing with the dials underneath each lever, dialing up and dialing down. This is what I need you to do. I need you to understand that you can do this too without having that all or nothing mindset where you're setting these unrealistic goals, going on these crazy diets that you're not going to stick to longer than three to four weeks and you're going to go lose any weight. Any weight that you lose, you're going to gain it right back because it's unsustainable. I want to create and add in rituals, structure, and routines to create new habits. These new habits are going to carry you forward into what? A new lifestyle. The key and the goal of every program and every person that I meet with is to add in structure, add in rituals, routines, create new habits that will create a new lifestyle. There's no going back. There's no going off. This all or nothing mindset is gone. We're all in. And the way we do that is by looking at what people are currently doing right now. What do you enjoy doing? What foods do you enjoy eating? What are you currently doing? And what can what levers can we pull? What dials can we move up or down to and, and keep them in, you know, somewhat normal. We know we're going to have to make some changes. But doing too much too fast for someone is a recipe for disaster. So let's go to the next slide here. Let's take a look at this. Do you fit any of these scenarios? I know you do. These are four common scenarios that I see 
in consults every freaking day. Scenario number one, daily steps are in check. They're still overweight. What do they need? They need a weight training program and improved nutrition. So we, we identified what levers needed to be pulled for this per certain person and dialed some stuff up and dialed some stuff down. Scenario number three, this person's barely eating. We know this person. They're barely eating, but they're still overweight. But the problem is they're not tracking calories properly. They're not mindful of the calorie intake. They're not moving enough, and they need a weight training program. So this particular person, we've got to, we've got to pull the nutrition lever for sure, look at quality and quantity of calories coming in, uh, educate them on uh, how to be more mindful, and uh, also increase daily movement, pull in the daily movement lever, dialing up daily, daily movement steps, and we're going to pull the weight training lever as well. Scenario uh, number, oh, this is number two right here, sorry. Scenario number two or three, depending on where you're looking at here, this person is weight training consistently. They're still overweight. They're obviously not moving enough. They lack daily steps and need to improve nutrition. So we're going to be pulling some levers, but not the weight training lever. We don't need to pull the weight training lever. They've already pulled that themselves. So what other levers do we need to pull for this particular person? And what dials do we need to dial up and dial down? It depends on the person. Scenario and final, scenario number four. This person is getting daily steps. They're weight training consistently, but they're still overweight. We got to go all in on quality of nutrition and tracking daily calories. So this person is doing a lot right, but they need to pull some other levers and move some new dials up or down. All four of these scenarios, guys, all four scenarios, although each very different, have the exact same problem and it's calorie surplus and the solution, which is calorie Deficit. The goal is figuring out how to get them into a calorie deficit through either consuming less calories, expending more calories, or both at the same time. This is not rocket science. This is not as hard as you think it is. This is all about putting that Sherlock Holmes hat on, right? And writing, making your lifestyle chart, looking at your total lifestyle, writing everything down, taking account of everything that you're doing and pulling certain levers, identifying what your primary source of energy uh, you want, to, that you need and want to make a sustainable, create a sustainable lifestyle for yourself. What side of that nutrition spectrum do you want to live on? And then pulling the levers that need to be pulled, dials need to be turned, and you will reach your goal uh, eventually. Uh, obviously, consistency is key. Uh, don't have, perfection, it's not perfection. It's consistency over perfection. But you will. Oh, here we go. My bad. This is what I was just talking about, the Sherlock Holmes lifestyle investigation putting it all on paper, identifying, identifying exactly where you need to be and where you're currently at so you can pull the necessary levers and turn the necessary dials to reach exactly your, your, uh, your end goal, right? And in order for this to happen, you're going to have to pay the price. You will have, you will find that everything in life exacts a price and you will have to decide whether the price is worth that prize. You're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to understand that you're going to pay now or you're going to pay later. That's all there is to this. Nutrition is a skill. Um, it is your main driver of fat loss. There is no other uh, lever, no more important lever than the nutrition lever. Exercise is important, but it should complement the nutrition. Uh, cardio is important for heart health, but it should complement the nutrition. It's not a, uh, a efficient driver of fat loss. Uh, most people put their eggs in the exercise and cardio basket. Most people are pulling the wrong levers. They're pulling the cardio lever first, and they're forgetting the most important lever, with is, which is the nutrition and the daily movement lever. In my, if you ask me, it should go nutrition lever, 
daily movement lever, strength training lever, and then the cardio lever, uh, uh, where most people will pull the cardio lever first and they're, they're mistaken. They need to be re-educated on the, on the, uh, the, the real importance of nutrition, daily movement, and strength training for long-term fat loss. If you're looking for fat loss, long-term fat loss, um, switch your order. You're pulling the wrong levers. Cardio is important for heart health and for mental clarity and for anxiety and depression and so many other inc incredible things. But cardio should complement the gym. Uh, cardio should complement nutrition. Excuse me. Uh, the gym is very important. But it should complement everything that happens outside the gym. The most important place that you need to take control of is your kitchen. And, you, and the things that are going in your mouth. The quality and quantity of foods that are going in your mouth. How much you're eating at home. How much you're cooking. Prioritizing cooking. Prioritizing eating at home. Prioritizing that nutrition lever as much as possible. And then, dial, and then pulling that daily movement lever and then pulling that strength training lever, uh, and then lastly, pulling the cardio lever. Um, that's the order of importance when it comes to the dials and levers method. If you'd like to learn more about how I can help you, leave a comment, or you can email me at primalfitmiami at gmail.com, and you can even text me on my personal cell phone at 305-951-6648. I'd be glad to help you further. I do offer consults. I do offer virtual um, virtual uh, consultations and phone consultations, and I can help you uh, uh, distant with distance coaching if needed. My name is Matt Pack, and I uh, welcome you to my world. And I hope that you will leave a comment and like and share with anybody you think could benefit from this. And uh, on that note, I'm out. Have a wonderful day. Bye.